Hello, good day friend. Welcome to the part 2 of SQL Server on Azure. We will discuss today SQL Managed Instance. I have already discussed on part 1 Azure SQL Database. So please check with this link. I got the details from this book. This is a free book and you can get the book from this uh, link. I will add this link to the description. So SQL Managed Instance is a fully managed SQL Server instance offering from Microsoft. Nearly 100% surface area compatibility with the latest SQL Server Enterprise Edition Database Engine. Provides all the platform as a service benefits available with Azure SQL Database like auto patching, version update, auto backup, high availability, etc. So, SQL managed instance offer features of both the world, the on-premise SQL server as well as the cloud platform as a service offerings. This supports most of the instance scoped feature of traditional SQL server deployment, hence easy for leap and shift migration from on-premise to cloud. Supports existing license migration. Now let us see the connectivity. SQL managed instance is deployed in a dedicated subnet in a virtual network. Applications in the same virtual network can connect to the managed instance using private IP endpoint. But applications which is running which are running in some other virtual networks. So if those application wants to access the SQL managed instance then there should be appearing between both the virtual network and then only the applications running in other virtual network can be able to access the managed instance. On premise applications also can connect but there should be a VPN or express route VPN connection between on premise as well as the virtual network where the SQL managed instance has been deployed. To improve the overall experience and availability, Azure applies a network intent policy on virtual network infrastructure elements. Now let us see this diagram. So here if you see this is the virtual network East US VNet. In this virtual network the SQL managed instance has been deployed in a dedicated subnet. Okay. Now you see in the center here is an SQL instance which has a private tabular data stream endpoint. So the, uh, the tabular data stream so between applications and um, the SQL instance the communication happens using TDS protocol. So a private endpoint has been exposed. So applications running in same virtual network in some, other, in some other subnet they can connect with this private endpoint. Applications which are running in some other virtual network there should be some pairing uh, between this virtual network and the virtual network where the applications are running then this uh, then uh, you know in peering the virtual networks appears to be the same virtual network and then these applications can be able to access this private endpoint and they can be able to connect to the SQL managed instance. Now you see this uh, there is a now for on-premise applications to access this there should be a gateway subnet in that gateway subnet a virtual gateway appliance will be deployed and then they will be able to connect to the um, instance via the same private endpoint. Now for management workload deployment etc there is a public endpoint ha has been exposed. So this public endpoint has a built-in firewall in place which have which allows IPs Microsoft IPs only okay this is for only Azure management services or management workload. Now regarding the virtual collect cluster okay so application clients can connect to SQL managed instance using fully qualified domain name. The structure of the domain name is like SQL managed instance name, DNS zone and then database.windows.net. The host name can only be resolved within the virtual network. The DNS zone ID is automatically created when the virtual network is deployed. The private IP belongs to internal load balancer. Okay. So there is a load balancer in place. So whenever applications are trying to connect to managed instance, it connects to that internal load balancer and there could be multiple managed instance. The how much, how many managed instance you can place that depends on the subnet IP ranges. 
now uh, so based on the name of the instance the load balancer then redirects the um, uh, traffic okay so the load balancer actually load balancer forwards the traffic to sql managed instance gateway service which takes care of security part the validation login firewall etc and then from there it goes to the uh, particular instance now management and deployment services connect to sql managed instance using a load balancer again there is another load balancer on the public uh, endpoint that uses a public ip address a built-in firewall allows traffic from microsoft addresses or on specified management ports now remember that uh, uh, this is for management workload only allow communication inside virtual oh, sorry all communication inside virtual cluster is encrypted using tls protocols now if you see that virtual cl cluster when you zoom in uh, the virtual cluster where the uh, sql managed instance has been deployed so here is the gateway services and here is the internal load balancer which is ex which exposed a private uh, tabular data stream endpoint okay so the traffic will come here so and then uh, they should uh, redirect to the sql engine so these are different different instances okay? and here is a public uh, endpoint so here is a load balancer so uh, the difference between this load balancer this is a public load balancer so because it has a public ip associated with it and here is no public ip so this is an internal load balancer okay now the azure management service uh, services can connect to this uh, public uh, endpoint and they can uh, do the management workload sql managed instance must be deployed in a virtual network dedicated subnet size of subnet determines number of sql management instance that can be deployed at least 32 ip addresses is required so minimum subnet mask of slash 27 is required the managed instance subnet needs to be delegated to the microsoft.sql slash managed instances resource provider okay sorry network security group uh, port 1433 for tabular data stream and 11000 to 11999 for redirection connection must be opened. The NSG network security group should be associated with the dedicated managed instance subnet. Okay, so there is a virtual network inside that there is should be a dedicated subnet where management instance are deployed and network security group should be associated with that particular dedicated subnet. A user defined route table is also required, which allows SQL managed instance to communicate with the Azure management services. I am here in Azure portal. So to create a managed instance, type managed, and then you will be getting managed uh, SQL managed instance. Uh, this one, and then we can go and we can click on add, and then we have to we need to select our uh, resource group. Let me put it as two, okay, and then. Uh, then give the management instance name something db what do now you see the validation is failing because this needs to be globally unique so i can for the timing put some random number okay and then we can choose the compute plus storage uh, configure manage instance if we click on that uh, we can choose between tier hardware generation v core number of v core okay i'll go with the minimum for the timing and if you already have a license you can select this if you select this uh, you have to confirm this one okay like that i don't have license you can choose backup uh, so geo redundant so i'll be coming on detail about on the backup section but you can choose for geo redundant zone related or locally redundant for the timing list let, let's start with the list one apply okay now the details i have to give okay this is administrator account so we have to make sure that uh yeah this should be must be at least 16 characters in length remember that thing uh sorry i lost it okay so next networking so you see that uh, this is a required field a virtual network needs to be selected uh, for the uh, for the deployment to happen okay and then next additional setting there is nothing else all these things and then 
tags I click on review and create and uh, okay so now uh, here is the details you can check the terms and all other details here okay but one thing uh, you, uh, deploying deploying managed instance is a long running operation taking up to six hours to complete okay so uh, for that reason I already have uh, an instance has been created so if I click on that so you can see the details are here so this is about uh, like resource group status it is online location is TOS okay and managed instance admin host is this pricing tier okay all these things now to connect to that I should have an application either running in same virtual network or uh, if it is running in some other virtual network in some other location there should be some peering connection between these two virtual network now what I did I created one uh, virtual machine inside the same virtual network and I will try to connect from there now uh, let me show you the uh, let me go to the virtual network so this is a virtual network okay this is a virtual network and if we see the diagram so here you can see the uh, so this is a virtual network and this is a managed dedicated managed instance where the uh, network security group is associated with this and as well as some route table okay here the uh, database has been deployed and then if I if we go this side we can see there is one more uh, subnet where the virtual machine is deployed okay so this is the virtual machine if you click on that so this is the virtual machine okay now I already have logged into it so it is a virtual machine here is our uh, management studio so I will try to connect to that I will take this and here is the details and I will go okay so these, these details remember your database management instance name there are five part into it so this is a management instance name and this is the DNS zone IT so this ID gets created when the virtual network is created so I got this so this is where uh, this is this one okay this is the details I copied this and I uh, I'm using this one okay so here it is now if I click on connect and you see it is getting connected okay now if I go here uh, I don't have any databases right now I can create a database okay so click on new database and then I can give it a db1 and click on ok so a new database will be created 